I'm Jonathan Strasberg. I'm an associate professor at the Moffitt Cancer Center in the uh, Department of Gastrointestinal Oncology. The paper published uh, in today's New England Journal of Medicine describes the international phase three study of a novel uh, radionuclide uh, lutetium-177 dotatate compared to high-dose octreotide in patients with uh, progressive midgut neuroendocrine tumors. The neuroendocrine tumors are generally well differentiated, often slow growing tumors that can originate in various locations in the body. Uh, Midgut neuroendocrine tumors originate in the uh, distal small intestine, proximal colon. Uh, those areas are part of the embryonic midgut. Uh, they tend to often be slow growing tumors with a tendency to metastasize to the liver. Uh, they have a propensity to produce certain hormones, such as serotonin, that give rise to the carcinoid syndrome. Uh, the carcinoid syndrome consists primarily of diarrhea uh, and flushing, warmth and redness in the face and often in the upper torso. Time patients can also develop carcinoid heart disease, uh, thickening and fibrosis of the, of the valves, primarily in the right heart as a result of hormone secretion. By incidence, uh, midgut neuroendocrine tumors are fairly rare. The incidence is rough, one in 100,000, but rising relatively quickly. Uh, compared to many other cancers. Uh, by prevalence, they're quite common. Patients tend to live for many years with this disease, and so there's uh, uh, you know, a fairly large number of patients living with um, um, midgut neuroendocrine tumors, sometimes with advanced disease. So for patients uh, primarily with localized tumors, um, uh, surgery is, is the, uh, generally the frontline therapy. Uh, these uh, tumors are often detected in patients who uh, have um, abdominal pain, uh, bowel obstruction. Sometimes they're found incidentally on colonoscopy, but they're very, very rarely dis, uh, detected in, in the stage one or two uh, setting. They're almost always at least stage three and very often stage four at the time they're detected. Many patients uh, with carcinoid syndrome complain of symptoms for many years before the diagnosis is made. So radio-labeled somatostatin analogs belong to a class of drugs also known as PRRT, peptide receptor radiotherapy. It basically relies on the fact that most uh, neuroendocrine tumors express uh, receptors to a hormone called somatostatin. And by attaching a radionuclide to a somatostatin analog, you can selectively deliver radiation uh, to these tumor cells. So first-line therapy for these tumors uh, generally consists of a somatostatin analog, in other words, a drug uh, that attaches to somatostatin receptors and inhibits both tumor growth and hormone secretion. Uh, there has thus far been very little um, in the way of second-line therapy uh, for this disease. Uh, for patients with liver-predominant tumors, we often rely on uh, liver embolization. Uh, there's an old drug called interferon that has been around for many years. Uh, the uh, benefit is, uh, you know, debatable and the toxicity is relatively high. Uh, so there's been a need uh, for a, a second-line systemic therapy in this disease. And there's been quite a bit of data, mostly from Europe over the past decade, uh, suggesting a pretty high efficacy rate with this class of drug, these uh, radio-labeled somatostatin analogs, and there have been several generations of treatment. Lutetium uh, is the latest generation of treatment, and probably the one with the uh, most favorable therapeutic index. And so this was the first attempt to investigate this drug in a randomized phase three prospective clinical trial. That has not been done before. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. This has been the standard endpoint for phase three neuroendocrine tumor trials. Overall survival benefit is often very, very hard to demonstrate uh, in this relatively rare tumor where patients live for uh, often for many years. Uh, the benefit of PFS in this study was quite striking. Um, uh, lutetium dotatate was associated with a 79% improvement in progression-free survival uh, compared to the comparator arm in this trial, which was high-dose octreotide. Um, on the high-dose octreotide uh, arm, the median PFS was eight months. It was not reached uh, with lutetium dotatate. Now, overall survival um, was uh, also a, a co-endpoint. Um, the final overall survival analysis is not expected uh, for several years from now, but the preliminary overall survival analysis was very promising. Uh, there were 26 deaths on the trial uh, with high-dose octreotide. There were only 14 
uh, with uh, lutetium. Uh, this translated to a 60% improvement uh, in overall survival and a p-value of 0 0.004. Um, now, the threshold for statistical significance is very high in this preliminary analysis, so it's important to emphasize uh, this is not a definitive proof of improvement in overall survival yet. But it's similar, there are a uh, similar class of drugs used as imaging agents. For example, gallium-68 dotatate is a, a very promising new imaging uh, agent for detection of somatostatin receptor expressing neuroendocrine tumors, uh, but this is a, a definitely a cytotoxic drug um, um, uh, that's designed to treat tumors. It's a small company called Advanced Accelerator Applications.